It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, I got $6,000 for you. Yeah, I got 6,000 bucks for you. Uh, it's a scholarship, okay, and we do it every year, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's great. But now, what is this $6,000 for? Uh, it's the Greater Hazleton Civic Partnership Scholarship Program. And uh, from what they just told me, it's been going on for 16 years. And my guest today, no stranger to uh, uh, the show, John Madden, who is the chairman of the uh, committee, and Bob Skulski, who is the executive um, director of Civic uh, Partnership. You know, John, you were telling me about, how did this thing start, this scholarship program? Well, the It's a technical uh, scholarship, yeah, okay. Actually, I, I, I didn't mention one thing. Uh, uh, John Zogby did a survey back around 2000 of this community identified some needs, and this was one of them. But it came particularly when Jack St. Pierre, when he was at PET Plastics in Humboldt Park, could not find an industrial maintenance technician in this area, and they just weren't available. And he, you, they are needed to make the wheels turn and the, plant, the things work in the plant. There are people who have electromechanical knowledge, and they don't fix things when they break. They keep things from breaking. And uh, he just couldn't find anybody. And so he put up $6,000 of his family foundation money and did so many years uh, in, uh, after this program started, uh, basically to deal with that directly, to provide a service to the community that he thought was needed. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, how the, that's where the money came from. Mm -hmm. So this scholarship, okay, explain just exactly what this scholarship is, uh, you know, it's how it's distributed, uh, what are the qualifications sure. uh, for it? Uh, anybody who lives in the greater Hazleton area who resides it can apply for it. It can be any age. You don't have to be in high school. You can be 50 years old. You can be 18 years old. Uh, the scholarship will cover uh, education at any accredited institution. It has to be technical. That includes medical technologies, though, including nursing. But it has to be technical because we're short of technicians here in this area. They're not technically trained people in this area. There are technical jobs, though, but not to train people. Uh, it has to be technical, and uh, it can be ranged from a certificate program, which is less than a degree program. Uh, you might accomplish it in a year. Uh, so industrial maintenance technology, for example, you can do that in, in less than a year or in a year uh, if, if you really press it uh, without it getting a degree uh, up to a baccalaureate degree in engineering or nursing. So we'll, we'll provide $3,000 a year for up to two years for a student in one of those programs. Uh, the deal is that when that student finishes the program, they have to come back to this area and work here for three years and stay in touch with us. Bob keeps track of that. Uh, and then they're free. Okay. Uh, they so if, if, I, if I'm looking for a specific technician, okay, uh, and you said what are the, what are, what's needed in this area? Uh, a real, one real need has been industrial maintenance technicians. Okay, and um, what, what's another need? Uh, well, uh, nursing, medical technology is needed in this area. Mm -hmm. Electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, uh, there's occasional need for them. People with what's called mechatronics, with electro electrical and mechanical knowledge for manufacturing operations. They almost always need somebody with that knowledge to be able to make the plant run. How many scholarships do you give a year? We've been giving uh, one to three. Okay, all right, so let's assume, um, you know, I. Uh, uh, I want to apply for this technical scholarship and would you and I'm, I want to go into a specific area you know um, but maybe that area that I want to go into is not available in our in our area for work how, how does that work then you want to go to school at Penn College or someplace else you so long as you come back here and work three years okay, what if I can't get a job when I come back here though well, we have, that doesn't happen very often. We made a couple, we bent the rules a little bit for two students. Okay. Uh, one's Toby Hanna, one's down working around in Bethlehem, but they made an honest attempt to find a job. Uh, we're not an employment agency, but yeah. we, we try to give them some good advice on that. And also, also one more thing about this that's really important is that students and their, their parents typically don't understand that these jobs are available or that they're worthwhile jobs. I, I, I used to go around for, we used to partners in education. We used to visit all the eighth grade classes every year in the whole school district. We'd go out and break it. And I would ask the kids in the class, how many of you think you need to have a baccalaureate degree to get a decent job? Every hand goes up. They all, and they're wrong. And I said, I'm from Penn State, but I'm here to tell you you're wrong. Uh, there are a lot of great jobs for people with less than a baccalaureate degree. 
But the kids don't know that, and a lot of their parents don't know that. And we want to encourage students to look at those kinds of careers. Uh, they're good careers. Uh, they're very mobile. If you have that kind of training, you can go any place in the country. Uh, people are happy to see you. So the, uh, you have a lot of choices open up to you if you get that kind of training. So it's, it's to their advantage to, to, to look at these possibilities, and we want to encourage students to, to pursue you know, productive careers. John, I saw that when I was at the Hazel Area Votech mm -hmm. back in 69 or whatever when we first started the Votech school uh, with all the different uh, uh, technical advantages that were there for the young kids, you know, whether it was welding, whether it was mechanics, distributive ed, you know, um, cosmetology, etc. The need, there's a tremendous need out there. So, um, Bob, as the executive director, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do as far as a scholarship? Uh, well, the civic partnership in general, you know, we, we have a number of major programs that we oversee. We're like the umbrella organization. We're a 501c3, and uh, we bring in small projects or large projects, and we oversee them and help them succeed. And, you know, once they succeed, a lot of the uh, smaller committees will go away and another committee will come in. But our two major... Uh, uh, committees right now is uh, Greater Hazelton Rails and Trails the Scholarship Committee and Black Creek Township Alumni Association. Uh, they're still very active in building a park in Black Creek Township. Uh, we just recently had our annual meeting last month and we brought on some new board members. Attorney Frank Skolkowski from Hazelton uh, came on board. He's an avid uh, outdoor person, loves to hike, loves to do the things that he could do on a trail, and he wants to help out the Greater Rails of Trails project. We also brought on uh, Neil D'Angelo Jr., who is also an advocate of hiking. He's up on a trail all the time, and, uh, you know, th for the whole betterment of Hazelton, uh, he's a member also of our committee now, uh, a board member. And then we brought on Gary Houseconnect from uh, Black Creek Township. Uh, Unfortunately, our Black Creek Township representative passed away back in December. A wonderful gal, Betty Hodgson. Uh, she did so much for their community and working as a volunteer at the Civic Partnership. We're all going to deeply miss her. But we have many things going on. We have, you know, the rails, the trails is always, that's a separate time, mm -hmm. separate place. We yeah. could talk about that yeah. forever. Well, you do come on and, and, and you know, um, we we're talking right. before, um, not to get off the subject here, yeah. how very important it is for us to develop our community uh, and, and make it grow in a positive way. Certainly you have some, you know, always a uh, couple controversial things, but, you know, it's, it's good to agree to disagree. And one of the things, as you look at rails and trails, you look at scholarships, you look at education, you look at, you know, the, the city, uh, the greater Hazelton area, what you have to offer, uh, is certainly a benefit to can-do, okay, when you're looking to get people to come in here and you're the chairman now of can-do board, uh, how easy it is when someone comes in and says, let me, let me show off, let me show you this, okay? So there may be a people inv involved in hiking or, you know, or education or whatever. You know, we certainly have great uh, educational facilities here, okay? So I think that's why it's important to have these things. People say, well, what's so important about this? It's important. Getting to the scholarship, uh, the technical scholarship, John, um, you know, you were chancellor at Penn State, correct? Um, and I ask you this question every year, but we have new viewers every once in a while. Um, why did you get involved with this? Is it a partnership scholarship? Yeah, yeah. I've been involved in technical education since I became Director of Academic Affairs at Penn State York in 1985. And uh, we had technical programs there and they weren't doing too well. We were facing some of the same ideas, attitudes from students and parents that I was talking about before here. Uh, it's a national problem. People don't see technology careers as, 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 as a good path. They don't understand, they think, they associate it with getting your hands dirty. They, actually, technicians are often very clean. They, they want to keep those things clean and working well. They don't want things to get dirty and greasy. But uh, people have a lot of, there are a lot of stereotypes about technical jobs. Uh, and we, I, so I got involved with the, vote, with the career center there at, uh, in, in York. Uh, got involved in technical education. We got involved in trying to recruit people for it, build the program, make it stronger. So, and this has been a problem throughout, is getting people to come into those technical programs. They were associate degree programs at the beginning, electrical and mechanical engineering technology, which are needed in this area too. 
and uh, we, I was, we're trying to build them, and there's just a lot of resistance people have to en enrolling in those kinds of programs, even though they're good careers and there are jobs available. A local engineer tells me uh, the difference between an engineering, engineer and a technologist is that technologist has a job. <laughs> and so um, the age limit, it doesn't make any difference, okay? No, people who want to move up the ranks in their own firm, who want to improve their credentials, uh, you know, do better at Hershey, whatever, we're very happy to give that person a scholarship. They know what they're doing, too. They've been around. And they know why they, wanted this, they want this education. So I'm, <clears throat> assuming I'm unemployed right now and, and I'm looking to get a job, no matter if I'm in my 30s or 40s or if, uh, whatever, uh, and if I would like to find out you know, just exactly what are available jobs you know, in, in your scholarship program, that knowing that if I go uh, and, I'm, and I qualify and I get the scholarship, um, I will have a job, okay. Um, do you have a list of, of what you need right now, knowing that I could go into that field, knowing I will have a job? Yeah, we have a generic list, and we, we'll, we're happy to talk to anybody who wants to know, will this qualify? We're happy to talk to them ahead of time and save them the trouble of making an application if they don't want to. I like philosophy, I'm a psychologist myself, but if you're gonna go into one of those fields, we're not gonna fund you. It has to be. <laughs> It has to be technical. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand that. So, I mean, so the thing is that I want to make sure that, you know, or I could be working in a plant right now and there's a need for, Absolutely. you know, a need for a position. This is a perfect opportunity for them. You want or to move for up. advancement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying, exactly, Bob. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, so Bob, so this is going on the 16 years. So, in the 16 years that you have had this um, scholarship program, uh, roughly had about 32 people that have applied. Okay, uh, what's the history like with these uh, people? Well, we're actually compiling all the history right now on all the candidates. Uh, we're not complete it with it, but I could tell you, uh, we have people scattered all throughout the Hazelton area in various different jobs. Uh, head of uh, manufacturing at a Humboldt plant or maintenance uh, manufacturing at a Humboldt plant. We have, uh, H two HVAC people, one that started their own business, another one that's down in uh, down down in the valley working. Uh, we also have uh, uh, two or three in a medical field. That's at Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazelton. So you know we we have uh, people scattered all around, and, and they're being successful. You know we always like to talk about our first one, who uh, wanted to go into HVAC. The student was. Boy, he was on top of everything when he was in high school. He was already attending trade schools down in Philadelphia area and everything. He loved his H, uh, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, and, and he was on top of the field. And we selected him. He uh, got his two-year associate degree, and now he runs a company with six employees, and he's doing very well. So it's that, those kind of success stories that, you know, really help us out and everybody that provides. And, and when you look at the Humboldt plants, uh, like John had mentioned earlier, we have uh, a number of people at the Humboldt plants satisfying the need. There's a real need out there for these uh, maintenance engineers, electronic technicians, those type of jobs in these plants. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're moving up rapidly, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it, 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 it's really a good thing for our area. It helps prevent brain drain. It helps to keep these people in our community and helps better our community. We've also, also supported people who've gone to med lab techs, uh, medical lab technicians, and I've get, when I was at Penn State, I got letters from hospitals, please keep this program. I said, well, you could help us out, you know? Yeah. Uh, but but uh, there's a real need for a lot of technicians in a lot of different areas, not just mechanical. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we're interested in, in support, supplying that need because that's, a, that's, a, that's part of the foundation. It's good for the students to look at those careers, and it's part of the foundation that, that, that companies who are gonna, gonna function here need to have to support themselves too. Folks, I'm talking to John Madden, who is the chairman of the uh, Greater Hazelton Civic Partnership Scholarship Program, and Bob Skolsky, who is executive director of Civic uh, Partnership um, uh, Program, um, and also does many other things. Folks, it's so important, you know, to um, to build up our community, make sure we have a lot of positive things happen. And when I get back, I want to ask John a couple of questions about uh, when you see a talent. Uh, and you know it's there. What do you do to develop that talent? Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam Lasant. You're watching The Sam Lasant Show. Remember, 24-7, 
SSPTV.com. You can watch all of the shows we produce. And in the greater Hazleton area, remember HD Channel 513. Uh, for my friends in Pottsville, we're on every day on Comcast 190 in the greater Pottsville area. In the mountaintop, Wilkesbury, Kingston area, Channel 92, Saturdays and Sunday evenings from 7 to 11. And all my friends in Lackawanna County, Scranton in those areas, Sunday mornings and Saturday mornings from uh, 8 to 11, uh, 8 to 12. My guest today, John Madden, who is the chairman of the, um, uh, the chairman of the uh, Greater Hazleton Civic Partner Scholarship Program, and Bob Skulski, who is Executive Director of Civic Partnership. Uh, I was saying, John, as a as a teacher, sometimes you you see talent, okay, that's out there, and and you just know you'd like to cultivate that talent, you know. Uh, so either as a teacher, as a you know involved in community, uh, as a chancellor, as a Chairman of, uh, of, of, the, of Can Do, you know, how do you do that? How do you get that, that person motivated? Because you know, my God, this person has that talent. Well, how do you motivate somebody, a student, you mean? Like, yeah. a, well, any, got, any person. There's a lot of talent out there yep, in yep. their 30s and 40s and 50s. That great talents out there. Well, one thing you do is you notice the talent. You have to observe it. A lot of people, I've seen people, uh, uh, and you can edit this out if you want, but I've seen, I've seen people who... Uh, who are students who are thought of as kind of dull, not too bright, there's something wrong with them. And I had one girl, one woman, in fact, she's an adult woman, who people thought she's just not too bright, she's kind of slow. And she did some funny things in my office, I was talking to her. And it turned out, I, she wrote, wrote a paper and it didn't make any sense. And I asked her to read it to me. And she read, what she read made perfect sense. She didn't read the text she'd written down. She had brain damage, she said, you ever hurt your head? And she said, yeah, she was at the gallery and mall when they were building it, and she fell and fractured her skull, and she had brain damage. And just a matter of being aware of that, we changed how she was tested. All of a sudden, she became an A student. Uh, there are lesser examples of that where you, can, you, you see the talent, but you've got to notice it. You gotta, and let the student know it's there, and let the student know there are some possibilities and that they're real. Beyond that, you can lead a horse to water if you can't make them drink. Yeah. But it helps to pay attention to the students and notice they do have the ability and let them know you have some confidence in their ability that if they want to develop it, they can. You know, I, I think there's a, a lot of people who just get down on themselves and, and they feel that they don't have the potential or, you know, or they feel they're not, be someone's better than them or they don't come from the same class, etc. And there's so many a majority of millionaires in the country at one time, I don't know if it's still, the majority of millionaires were people that never went to college, okay? Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, because they have all, look how many, you know, in our area, people who have businesses that worked hard because they have that talent in their development, but it's to get that person to be motivated. So, so Bob, how do you, get, how do you motivate your kids? <laughs> how did I motivate my kids? Yeah. <laughs> Just by being a good father and, uh, you know, by leading by example, I guess you would say, you know, uh, uh, that, that always works. Uh, uh, you know, I, my prior history working up at Tobiano Army Depot, I, I've seen so much up there at Tobiano because uh, uh, people would come into the depot and uh, they may only had uh, limited education. Maybe they had a uh, associate degree or uh, just uh, service uh, experience and they would move up to the top of the ranks because of their personality and their will to do, to exceed and you know do the right things mm -hmm. so uh, you know the possibilities are endless around here for anyone that wants to really succeed to move up in whatever their profession may be getting to this i'm sorry john well, i just add one thing more to it. it's really important you've got to you've got to approach people where they are you got to recognize who they are, what they are, and you got to deal with them in their own terms. If you come in with a lot of jargon, a lot of structure, a lot of text, whatever, uh, you're not going to do too well. You really have to find out where they are and work with that. You got to take them from where they are to someplace else, and you got to do it a step at a time. Okay, so this scholarship program, okay, mm -hmm. for those people maybe going through the channels and just tuning in right now, um, even though we're playing the show a number of times, this is this Greater Hazelton Civic Partnership. Uh, scholarship program, okay, a technical one, okay. Yes, so let's explain again, again what, why, what do you mean by that and who could apply for this? Anybody can apply who wants to get a technical education and it can, they can be headed for anything from a certificate program to a baccalaureate degree program. It has to be technical. That includes medical technologies and nursing. We consider those to be technical also. 
uh, and we'll be happy to answer any questions anybody has about does this career qualify, does this occupation qualify, or does this program qualify. They have, the program has to be at an accredited institution. We've lost a couple of people who are not going to accredited institutions. Uh, but beyond that, uh, th that, that's really the only requirement we have, impose. Well, you're talking about advancement. Like, so, let's assume you're looking at some a technician who wants to advance, but they have a full-time job. Are there, uh, are there f educational facilities that they could go? Yes, yes, there are. Oh. And also, uh, most companies are happy to see their people want to get more education that's relevant. Some companies around here pay for it, too. Uh, so it, it, it's uh, it, some company and oh. smart companies welcome it. So therefore, if I'm in working in a, 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 and I know that there's an opportunity available, I may want to approach the management and say, "Look, I'd like to absolutely apply for a scholarship to, to so f to fill this position." The HR director will be happy to hear that. That is fantastic. And a yeah. lot of companies will support them when they do that yeah. and try to make arrangements for that to happen. John, how does one know? Um, you know, we talk about the rails and trails, and that's a story in itself. We talk about the scholarship program, you know, and, and now that you're sitting as chairman of Can Do, okay, and we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, trying to attract industry and making our community better and being positive, okay? Uh, sometimes we are our own worst enemies because we have a tendency of becoming so negative, and, and this is not a good thing, okay? But to promote positive things. Um, how do, you, how do you get the word out there to the general community? Because everyone goes to work. They, you know, they have their own problems when they come home. They don't necessarily want to listen to Sam LaSan talking about the wonderful things in, in, in the greater Hazleton area. Uh, but how do we let people know that we have a tremendous resource here in the greater Hazleton area? Uh, well, uh, exercise it, talk about it, uh, make sure it stays wonderful, make sure it make it better. Uh, the truth helps a lot, having that be a true statement that, that we have a lot of wonderful things here. Build those things, get more of them, you know, keep, keep looking to develop it, keep looking to grow. And the, the, the truth will catch up and after, after a while people come to realize that, uh, that uh, in fact there are a lot of great resources here. The hospital here is also a great resource, oh and God. by the yeah. way, very high quality. A yes. lot of people don't realize yeah, that. Yeah, I just had a show on that. I mean, we, we, I have a monthly show with the hospitals. Well, I mean, you have Lehigh Valley, you have Coordinated Health, you have a lot of great things that are happening in this area, okay? Bob, you said something before, and, and you said, well... Well, well one thing ahead. I would just like to add to what John said, uh, one of the things that we did this year, it, as a result of a committee recommendation, is to <coughs> send out to every company in Humboldt, in Walmart, and uh, through the Chamber of Commerce, all their mailings, a uh, letter and a, a flyer advertising our uh, scholarship program for them to post at their company so their employees are aware of it, uh, you know, the parents of the children are aware of it, so we're hoping that that works. I'm hoping uh, so too. Better. You said something about, you know, you want to show example, okay? And I've said this, and not to patri patronize the both of you, but I, I applaud you, John Madden, and I applaud you, Bob Skulsey. You know, you, you, know you, you retired. You could be living a great life. I'm, I'm sure you are living a great it's life now. <laughs> no, no, I mean, and same. But however, you're involved in the community, and you're going to meetings, and you're, you're, you're developing that. And I think people don't, you know, you're not getting paid $100,000 a year for what you're doing, okay? So you're, you're, there's a lot of volunteer work. And as a chancellor of Penn State, and you did a great job up there, uh, and hopefully that call, uh, campus is going to grow as, as it is, but there's so many great people in this town that people think, well, if we didn't have the John Maddens, the Bob Skulskys, to be out there and, and giving their talent. And so that's an example in itself. And I think that's, that's important. You know? And I, you know, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, and, and Sam, we, we could do a complete show on that. Uh, with the volunteers that I have as yes. part of the Civic Partnership yeah. Yeah. that devoted 14, 15, 16 years of their life right yeah. now yeah. to the Civic Partnership and volunteerism in a community, it's, just outstanding. Actually, it's amazing. If you think that I'm getting off the scholarship, but that rail trail wouldn't exist if a bunch of people hadn't just got together and said, we want a rail trail, we're going to make it happen. And it's fantastic. And they keep doing it year after year yeah. and get through all these yeah. barriers that keep, keep popping up. Yeah. And there's a rail trail out there. Yeah. Well, John, I wish you the best with the uh, folks. It's the um, Greater Hazleton Civic Partnership Technical Scholarship. Uh, doesn't make any difference what age you are. Uh, but if you want advancement, etc., or you want to find out what's going on, it's 4570-455-1509, ask for Bob Skolsky, and uh, there's um, $6,000 available to you. 
Uh, and I think you, uh, for those of you who have taken advantage of this scholarship, you know exactly how great it was for you. John, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Bob, it's always nice to hear from you when you're doing this stuff. We've got to do something on Rails and Trails, okay? Same. Okay. We'll see you next time.